Hi, this is John at Happy Wife Acres. Have you ever tapped a maple tree to make maple syrup? I haven't. So, why don't you come along on this journey with me while I do it for the very first time. It is the 10th of February. I have to keep corn in my pockets, keep throwing it to the guineas to make them be quiet. So, this is a very large sugar maple. There are five of them in the front yard. So, I don't plan on doing this on a very big scale. Like you, I watched a ton of videos on YouTube to figure out how to do this, talk to some friends. Um, wound up buying these taps. They have a little ball in them to keep the sap from going back in, I guess. Uh, they go at a slight angle up into the tree. And I bought a kit. And with the kit came these tees. So I can tap two places on the tree and then run it into a jug. Right now I'm just going to use clean milk jugs to collect the sap. So I'll plan on checking it once a day, see how they're doing, and then pour it into a larger bucket. And when I get five gallons, I'll start boiling it down. There's a 40 to 1 ratio, so it's going to take a five gallon bucket to get a 16 ounce jar of maple syrup. Guinea! Like all the experts say, south side of the tree, maybe about waist high, higher, right above a big root. There's a root right there. Slight upward angle. Going in about two inches. The kit came with hose. Gonna cut a couple of pieces so I can attach them to the taps and run it down to the bucket. Hose can be really hard to slip on in cold weather so I use a lighter and I just warm the bottom of it. Not too much, don't want to melt it and just get it warm. Can't hardly get a flame right now but uh, I'll get it done. Just warm it up, slip it on. I put all the hose and taps together first because I didn't want to have to fight with that on the tree and now I'm going to tap it into the hole. 5 16 inch hole was what I drilled. So that's nice and secure. Then I'm going to just run the hose into the milk jug. It's not a complete seal because I want air to get out as it flows in. And I'm just going to let it sit there and hope that the chickens and guineas don't get too curious about it. And then we'll check it tomorrow and every day after we want the, the freeze at night and some warm days and we've got a few of those coming up so we'll hope for the best this is the setup then a very large sugar maple two taps that tee together and come down into a milk jug all right so it's been a couple of days and we've already gotten a gallon of sap so we're just going to transfer it into this bigger bucket. That was just really overnight, wasn't it? It was. One mm -hmm. gallon overnight. This one's a gusher. Almost need to just hook up to this uh, big old container. <laughs> just leave the big container out here. The other, there's probably another two gallons between the other trees. So we're going to go collect that. Interesting observation. This tree right here is a gusher. It's giving me about two gallons a day. This one over here, about a gallon a day. And that one over there where the chickens are, I'm getting a trickle, I'm maybe a cup a day. Hardly anything. And then that one over there is about, well, same thing, about two gallons a day. And this one over here, about a gallon a day. So just an interesting observation how Different trees give different amounts. They're all here in the same area. Probably planted at the same time. Well, today is the 13th of February. It's about 34 degrees, and I'm getting ready to boil. Uh, I've collected about 10 gallons, just five gallons overnight. It is amazing how much is pouring out of these trees. Uh, there's, there's one that is probably giving us about three to four gallons a day. So I'll show you my setup. Right here on the back patio, next to the hot tub, 
By the way, this is a metal structure, so I'm not afraid of it catching fire. I have a turkey fryer with a very large stock pot. I'm just gonna go a traditional boiling way. Next year I hope to have a reverse osmosis. But I've poured it in, I'm gonna light it up. It is 9.30 and you can see the level. Might add a little bit more and then we'll get it started. I expect this will take all day long to get us one pint of maple syrup. By the way, as you probably would do, I dipped my finger in there just to see what that tastes like. And it's not very sweet at all. People say it's 2% sugar. Tastes like it. It just tastes like water. And it's not very sticky. A lot of snow today. Uh, it's been a little over 30 minutes and coming up to temp, starting to boil. I have this thermometer, which I've got a better one when it gets closer, but uh, just to monitor the temp, it's about 160 right now. What are you doing? I can't even see your face. All right, a little over an hour and the guineas still have not shut up. Guineas! Could you give me like 30 seconds here? Okay. They're boiling away. Looking good so far. How you doing, happy wife? Surprisingly, even though it's snowy, I'm not that cold. Okay. So, that's good. It's been two and a half hours, at least, and the guineas still have not shut up. Oh, yeah. Um, well, that doesn't change. Okay. They like us, honey. So this, it's hard to see because there's so much steam, but that uh, foam right on the side is about where it started. And now, I'm going to say it's about three inches down, so... Coming along, I'm gonna say it's probably about an inch an hour, uh, something like that. It's been about four hours and very hard to see in there, but I would say that about half of it has boiled off. I did taste it and it's starting to taste sweet. Temperature's kind of holding steady. It has been five hours. And I'm going to turn this off. We have to go somewhere. From everything I have heard, you can turn this off and restart it later. It's okay. What I've noticed is it is starting to change colors. It was crystal clear like water, and now it's starting to get a little tan color, which is good. I did sneak another taste, and it's, it's tasting sweet. One interesting thing to note, this propane tank is stuck to the ground. When a tank starts losing gas rapidly, it gets cold. And it's already cool out here, so it's just frozen itself to the ground. And I, I can't budge this thing, so I was just wanting to check how full it was. But I can see that the frost line is about here. So after five hours, that's how much it's used. Next morning, 14th of February, Valentine's Day. I restarted it. Uh, the guineas have finally gotten quiet, and that's because uh, it's 16 degrees out right now. It was 11, so it's coming up. But uh, it's about an inch. I'm going to let it do this for about another half hour or so. Then I'm going to bring it inside and put it on the stove to finish it. I did sneak another taste, and it's getting very sweet. So I brought it in and sure enough I had about one inch at the bottom. This is a two quart pot so you can see it's almost full. I don't have much instrumentation. I don't have a refractometer. Uh, I'm going to order one and they're about $25. At least one I was looking at. I don't have a hydrometer. I have a hydrometer for wine but Obviously, the sugar contents are way different, so the scale doesn't even come close to what I need. I have two things that I'm going to use. One is a candy thermometer. And you want this to be 7 degrees above your boiling temperature. So, Google told me that our water boiling temperature is 210.5, so I'm looking for 217.5. When it gets to that, I should stop. So I'm bringing it in because I don't want it just boiling away outside. I want it a more controlled boil inside. 
another thing that I did, I started with about six gallons, which is probably going to make around 20 ounces. So I put 20 ounces in this pan and it came up to about three quarters of an inch. So when I get to about that level, I know I'm going to be close. So we'll see how this works. So I'm going to just start boiling this away. Found this tip online, which is to filter it before it becomes syrup. Uh, just to get the particulates out while the liquid is still very much liquid. Uh, so I'm just using a coffee filter and just a plastic sieve over a bowl. And I'm going to pour this in and see what happens. This is working okay. And look how cloudy that is. And when I pull this up, look how clear that is. So it's a little slow. I mean, it's like making coffee, but it's working well. I'm going to keep doing this. You can see the junk in the filter. Uh, I've actually got it up on a rack now. I'm just going to change out filters and do it again. Got a little bit more left over here. All right, so this is the sludge that I got out of filtering. And it wasn't a whole lot there, but uh, look at how clear this is now. Much, much better. I may have to filter it later, but I got a lot of it out right now. Uh, also, I did decide to pull out the digital thermometer. You can get these at Walmart, super cheap. And it has a, a setting, so when it gets to 217, it'll start alarming and let me know. So that way I don't have to stand right over it, although I'm sure I will be. Getting close to the end. So I boiled for five hours outside and then another eh, maybe an hour this morning and it's been a couple hours here. Of course I took time out for the filtering. You can start to see the bubbles starting to clump together. It smells heavenly in here. It smells like I, I need to whip up some pancakes soon. It's of course turning that nice caramel brown. Very clear, very happy with this. I just hope I don't screw it up. So, I got the, you know, the temperature is going up. So I set it to 218, it's now at 216. So I don't think I have very long to go. We'll keep a close eye on it. We happen to have this leftover maple syrup bottle and we're gonna reuse it. But here's a quick tip. So I pulled off the label and it's sticky, right? And that's always a, always bothersome. I wanna get that sticky off. I wanna reuse the bottle. Here's a tip. Uh, just put it in the sink and spray it with WD-40 or something equivalent. I've got the Walmart generic. And just start rubbing it in. It will dissolve it. You can see how it sort of cakes up. And just kind of work it with your finger and it just kind of dissolves and once it's all dissolved just wash it off with soap just a couple of minutes and there it is all clean and i had this up to 219 you can really see the difference in the bubbles now there's one other test that i was looking at online called the spoon test drip it off of a spatula that last drop's just supposed to hang there. You can definitely see that it's very sticky on the spatula. It's really bubbling. I think I'm done. I'm going to run this through a clean tea towel because, well, that's what I see everybody doing. It looks like that's it. I am excited. I cannot explain to you how giddy I feel that <laughs> this came out of trees. And now it's delicious maple syrup. I'm just going to put it in some containers. So there's the result uh, over two days. And between seven and eight hours of boiling, I've got a 16 ounce jar. This is an eight ounce jar, but it's not quite full, so maybe about six ounces. 
So 22 ounces, started with about seven gallons. So at the 40 to one ratio, that tells me that the ratio is right. It's still warm, but it's rather clear. So I think I got that part right. Uh, the time where people said it takes about eight hours. I think that came together. The color came together. So I, I think a blind pig found an acorn here and did a lot of things right. So I'm gonna try this again and hope I can <laughs> get some more. Uh, yeah, this is exciting to make your own maple syrup. I, I hope you will try this. So the happy wife is home from her farm conference. Now she gets to taste the syrup. So. I was so jealous. I meant the conference. I really just wanted to try this so bad. Like, well, now you can. Now you can. So pour you a, a, a loving spoonful. I'm just going to try a little bit because it's syrup. And tell me what you think. Oh man, it's like caramely. I can taste the caramel of the sugars. Different from store bought? Wow. I, if you're not trying this, you should really try to make this for yourself. So, so the husband did something good? Husband did something great today. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm happy. Like I said in the beginning, the reason I made this video is because I'm a complete newbie. And if you are thinking of trying to make maple syrup, I wanted you to watch this from the perspective of doing it for the first time. Didn't have a, a lot of measurement equipment. I had just basic equipment, turkey fry or big stock pan. Um, and look what I wound up with. So I'm ecstatic. Hope you enjoyed this. Of course, if I can do it, you can do it too. Give it a shot and hopefully you'll feel as good about it as I did. Thanks for watching, please subscribe, and we'll see you soon on the homestead. All right, bye.